a surprisingly pleasant stop overnight at Marston. To start with this morning, just a couple of miles to the area of Rudheath and Broken Cross, as I believe there may be a shop there, because I'm now out of food. And if I am able to get some supplies there, then a couple of miles further on are some very nice off towpath moorings created by the Broken Cross Boating Club. And I'll spend a couple of days there and do some editing. However, if I can't get supplies, I'll have no choice but to continue on to Middlewich, which is about another three miles. One way or another, I need food. Bit of a grey and uninspiring start, but tomorrow is supposed to cheer up a great deal. Such are the joys of the British weather, you just don't know what you're going to get. Coming up is a sharp right turn and the canal changes from barren desolated wilderness into the outskirts of Northwich. bottleneck here so I've come to a crawl and I'm just letting this boat through yeah. part of the huge Tata chemical works there and we'll be passing right through that This place has hardly changed in the past 20 years. I've known it on and off, really. Well, I'm happy to see that it looks busier than I remember. However, it's also a bit narrower.
Sorry, but if you're expecting glorious rolling countryside, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> this chemical works is about as industrial as it's possible to get on the canal system. As I say, we go right through it. In its heyday, this part of the canal would have been transporting salt intended to be shipped all over the world. Bridge 186 and the noise suddenly fizzles out and Broken Cross and Rudheath aren't much further beyond that bridge down there. If you fancy yourself a freehold private mooring, well, there you go. Right, I'm going to be looking to moor up somewhere just beyond that bridge, and over in that direction over there. It's supposed to be a shop. Well, there are boats. And I must be able to squeeze in somewhere. Let's go take a look then. I'm not expecting Fortnum and Mason, but anything is better than nothing. There's a Texaco garage, but it has a spa shop in it. So I think that'll have to do. Oh, 
Well, a pleasant enough shop. Yeah. Not much in the way of fresh. So I've basically bought a sort of three day wilderness survival kit with uh, all the bare essentials. Right, I have bought some milk for obvious reasons, a tin of potatoes to go with my sausage and beans, yeah. some bread so I can make bacon sandwiches, mushrooms to go with the bacon sandwiches and the sausage and beans and potatoes, a spare tin of beans, some packet rice to go with some tin chilli that I already have, and probably tonight a pizza. I already have bananas and apples and for late at night when I fancy a nibble <laughs> later, some ginger nuts and just in case another packet of ginger nuts. Like I say not much in the way of fresh in the shop but that is a good substantial energy, protein, various nutrition, three day emergency ration kit. Right, let's get on then. Onward, ever onward, and a little over three miles to the off towpath Broken Cross Boating Club moorings. Yeah, when it comes to continuous cruising and buying food, you literally do have to make the best of what you can find. 95% of the time, I eat very healthily. Plenty of fruit and veg and meat and so on. But there are times when you have no choice. And uh, what's wrong with sausage, beans and potatoes, eh? may possibly be brightening up. Hey, another viewer there. Hello there, sir. And he popped out of his boat to say thank you for going so slow. No worries. As I said, there's nothing worse than you're on your boat and you know there's a loony coming because you can hear your ropes starting to go. And one day they're just going to snap. So yes, do the right thing, go slow past boats, please. Looking to me like the makings of a new marina.
Yeah, they were in the process of finishing off this marina when I came past here northwards about three years ago. So it should all be done by now. Yeah, that's a good size marina. Very wild remote section here. And actually there's a bit of armco here. I think this could do me. Because there may not be moorings down at the old Broken Cross Boating Club picnic area. No, I'm going to be a glutton for punishment and take a chance on Broken Cross. That was the goal I set myself, so I'm going to stick to it. I didn't get where I am today by not sticking to my plans, you stupid boy. Another sharp turn, crossed by a railway. I've just remembered something from season three when I came along here northwards. I was talking about that I'd just turned 50 and that I knew it was happening because I'd started listening to Radio 4. But of course I'm no longer 50. I'm now 54. You can't halt the march of time. The one thing you can do is control what you listen to. And I no longer listen to Radio 4. This looks a bit unusual. This boat appears to be adrift or grounded just to the side here. It's not moving at all. So I would say it's grounded. It's not roped up. And not that far to the mooring now. Just beyond bridge 177 actually. This boat's moored up in a less than ideal spot. But that doesn't mean there's no moorings down at the off tow path. Because the only downside of the off tow path 
is it's not possible to get to the towpath and the wider yonder. Oh, I can see a boat. Ah, but is that on the towpath side? I think it is. If there's room for three, I'll fit in there, no worries. I'm going to go for it. I seem to remember there's mooring rings all the way along. Well, the boat that was moored here, they only stopped for a spot of tiffin. So I've moved back to a slightly better edge. Well, 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 said the well. This is going to be my spot for two, maybe three days. There used to be a sign saying how long you could stay, but uh, I can't remember what it is. So I think three days, and I have yet more editing to do. It's worth pointing out just quickly that as I've said before this is my third time along this stretch of the Trenton Mersey. Um, so for me the real sort of travels and voyage of discovery doesn't really start until I get down to Kingslock at Middlewich uh, which takes me on to the Trenton Mersey Canal or the part of it which I haven't done before. Uh, head south goes through Stoke-on-Trent and Stone and also I'll be passing through the second longest tunnel in Britain um, I think it's about a mile and a half called Harecastle Tunnel or as it's known among the boating community Scarecastle Tunnel but uh, I don't think it's not that it's not that bad they've now removed the tow pass so there's no problems with height uh, and there's extractor fans big powerful fans which they close the doors behind you, you go in like a convoy and they stick the fans on and it just sucks everything out of the tunnel which is uh, well pretty good when it comes to Aslan um, and of course my tunnel lights working but yeah that will do me for today I'm gonna finish my cup of tea do myself a bit of grub and more than likely check through the day's uh, video footage so I'll see you next time Cheers for now. For those who are new to canals and narrowboating, a lock is a deceptively simple way of moving a boat to a higher or lower water level.